Hello Hema friends and welcome to the last episode of the Longsword Beginner's Guide. Yes, it comes uh, a bit too late compared to the previous episodes and uh, at the end of the video I will explain you why. While sharing at the same time some info about the future project I have in relation to this topic. That said, let's start with the today's topic. So, today we are going to give a look to sparring, which is the most important testing ground for your skills. More in the specific, I want to show you four different types of sparring which you can use to work on specific aspects of your own fencing. The first kind of sparring I am going to analyze is of course the most common one, which broadly speaking follows these unwritten rules. The fencer which scores first in a clean way is the winner. A double is generally considered a failure and of course getting hit is considered losing, of course. The fencer which gets hit ends the action he was landing and then the fight ends. This last action I mentioned right now is called afterblow. The fencer then separates and everything starts from the beginning. Landing this so-called afterblow, which I just described, is not mandatory at all, but it may be useful to encourage correct oppositions and parries after the attack lands, which is always a good skill to learn. The second kind of sparring is the multiple hits sparring. This may represent a fight where the first hit doesn't incapacitate the opponent, if you want. The goal is to score two or even three attacks on the opponent. Every fencer keeps count of the received hits and stops when he gets hit two or three times depending on what you choose. In this video we are doing the two hits version, which is easier and in a certain sense more useful. You can score the two hits on the opponent in a row, so by landing multiple attacks in the same action, or you can do it separately, so by entering measure, poking the opponent, fleeing away and then building up another action from the beginning. Because of this, remember that it is crucial to properly divide a boat from the other. So, after one of the fencer gets hit twice and the fight ends, you instantly do something which makes the game reset. You may simply do it by doing a salute or just taking more distance from the opponent than you normally do and then after a couple of seconds start with another boat. Of course, the ideal goal is to score the two hits while not getting hit yourself. But, at the same time, you don't have to stop if you get hit once, which is another important thing to learn. Now we enter into the field of sparring with restrictions. The third example is a, a sparring with limited techniques. In this video, we decided to limit ourselves to cuts, of whatever kind. But you may be even more specific, like uh, only two edge cuts, for example, or only thrusts and the sotani. You can decide the limitation yourself in relation to what you want to train out. This kind of sparring is useful both to force yourself in doing new, different actions compared to your repertoire, and also at the same time learning how to defend from certain actions you may see rarely in your training environment. Besides these limitations, the sparring rules are the same as in the first example or the second if you want to make things even more complex. The fourth example of sparring is another sparring with restrictions. This time the limits are in regards of the targets available to hit. In the video you are watching right now, we limited our salves to two targets, legs and head. And we also decided to count the cuts which landed over the shoulders to make things a little bit easier. Of course you can go for whatever targets you want, like uh, only upper legs and arms, or more specific like only a right leg and the left arm. It's up to you. This sparring format, as uh, for the previous one, helps developing your fencing in new ways, building up new tactics and uh, techniques to solve the new problems. Again, besides these restrictions, the basic rules of this kind of sparring are the one I presented in the first example. Of course, you can mix up the sparring methods and uh, by doing so you make things harder and harder. Like uh, free hits with uh, final afterblow, only thrusts and uh, you can hit only torso and upper legs. Hmm, not bad. Very good people. Four sparring methods which you can mix up to train out your fencing in many different ways. Now a couple of words on this series and the new projects. 
So, more than three years ago, when I started the Longsword Beginner's Guide, I planned something around 30 episodes. But from that point on, many things changed. I learned more about fencing in many different regards, I improved my way of looking at tactics and strategy, and I also modified the conceptual method I used to build up my actions. Long story short, while still being relevant and useful, the Longsword Beginner's Guide is outdated compared to what I was able to do nowadays. So I decided to stop shooting it with this episode. I took this decision because I decided to make a new, better and far more organized training guide. I will also do the things differently in terms of format. We will have lesser episodes, I think between 6 and 8, and every one of them will be longer, between 10 and 20 minutes each, more or less. In this series, instead of teaching single techniques, I'll try to pass the tools to conceptualize technique and then tactics. I will show exercises to train out the main requirements of sword fighting, like reach, footwork, timing, and so on. While the goal of the previous series was making people interested in HEMA and make them start training in some way or another, the goal of the new one will be to make people able to think about their own training, rationalize their own goals and be able to actually create techniques and tactics based on their necessities. I will start shooting this series in winter 2023 if everything goes as planned. Very good people, I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching and remember to check my Patreon page in the video description if you are interested in supporting me and my work. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Wait, I'm going to finish the long of the beginner's guide. Cosa? Scusa, di cosa? Sei triste che finisce la long sword beginner's guide? Cosa? E quella che stiamo facendo? Ah. Sei triste? No. Ah. Tornerà.